So when I was on my way here, um, I received one of those motivational talks from a really close friend of mine. Uh, you know the ones where the person on the other line takes on you know, the role of a boxing coach stationed by the boxing ring corner, reminding you of, of your greatness with the view, of course, of letting you know that you can conquer the world. So really, from the bottom of, um, of my heart, I'd just like to say that it didn't work, you know? <laughs> I, I, I mean, she accidentally ended the very powerful conversation, I might add, um, with, you know, Busi, you literally going to give veteran journalists who have been in the game advice on how they should do things. So just make sure that you sound convincing. <laughs> and I know, okay, to a certain extent and to a certain point, I have not won a journalism award just yet. I'm getting there, so we're working on it. But most importantly, I think I am still at a point in my career where I am still at that very same boxing ring corner, observing, absorbing as well, and looking at ways in which I can improve my broadcasting. So I am able to stand here and speak like an expert on an issue with a vast amount of information that I received off social media as well as the internet. And furthermore, everyone who is seated here is essentially a journalist, right? We are able to report on a story from wherever we are at whatever time, right? So that relationship between traditional media as well as its audience has definitely changed and it's not um, a revelation because in the past we had a group of gatekeepers who um, told us what we should do and what we should know. And we trusted them because they were people who were old, who were experienced, and who looked like they knew what they were doing. But obviously things have changed over time, and journalism is more about the audience-driven content. But I think the reluctance of media organizations to embrace this change and accept this huge chunk of young people as an audience has costed millions and even billions of rands. So I'm going to talk about three things or reflect on, uh, about three things that I think justify and motivate why traditional media should be looking more to a much younger audience in a bid to remain relevant. So first is the UN report on the world's population. Secondly is the hashtag Fees Must Fall campaign, which obviously gained momentum um, throughout um, in various universities around the country. And lastly, why I think social media platforms, different ones like your Facebook and your Twitter, continue to win. So the first one, a United Nations affiliate report suggests that the world's population is aged between 10 and 24. So in other words, never before has there ever been so many young people living in the world. So there is more potential for social and economic prosperity and change. So because the world is getting younger, it sort of kind of makes sense for traditional media to focus on that audience, right? It should be simple. And I think they should look at producing content that will appeal to the much younger audience. Which then leads me to my second pillar, why social media is essentially important and why we continue to use it. That is because it adapts to our behavior and not the other way around. So we don't necessarily have to change our lives to use, for example, Facebook or, or Twitter. And third, let me just make quick examples on this. In the past, we would have to quickly rush home and uh, in time to catch, you know, respected journalist Nokolo Khrutbom read her 6 p.m. bulletin. But these days, we're able to download links and actually watch uh, news from the com uh, comfort of our homes at whatever time that is determined by us. Some people used to buy and still do Sunday newspapers and consume those um, in, in, you know, small bits throughout the, the day. But we are now in charge of how we access information and when we do so. Right, the second one, hashtag Feast Must Fall campaign. I think it wasn't necessarily important how traditional media covered 
those protests in different universities around the country. And that is predominantly because young people were in charge of their narrative. They would correct traditional media or mainstream media, in other words, if they felt that they did not uh, portray what was actually happening on the scene. But what was important for me was how um, youth-led blogs, as well as varsity radio stations like the Daily Vox, was able to capture what was really happening on the scene in a way in which mainstream media couldn't do. So the notion that young people are essentially not interested in news is absolutely rubbish. We are merely entering a new enlightenment, as I said before. The very same way that the young audience got excited about the telegraph in the 1840s, radio in the 1920s, television in the 1940s, and cable, my favorite, in the 1980s. So the transition has been definitely continuous. And that evolution has showed us that traditional media does not necessarily die. Each medium adapts to new technology and is reformed and refined rather with time. So technology is merely bringing in a new audience that wouldn't have consumed um, the content in its old form. So the hunger for information, especially from young people, I think holds the key to traditional media's affirmation and its future. But for this to work, we have to change the way in which news is presented. It has to be futuristic. It has to move from a trust me era to a show me era. So journalists have to show us that they were there. They have to provide us with the exclusive information. And that will determine whether or not young people will actually buy the content which is placed out there. And that content is definitely a source of revenue for traditional media and uh, newspapers. So the audience will only buy it if it is content with the information. But to get to the heart of the matter, I think what disrupted traditional uh, media industry will definitely save it. It is those who invest in young minds that will survive that continuously evolving industry. Because in a world ruled by youth, Old and experienced is a new absolute. Thank you. <laughs>